The deep seas of the world's ocean are the least explored places on our planet. Mysterious anomalies occur there, and unknown creatures inhabit these depths. Thanks to modern technology, scientists have managed to peer into incredible depths. And in this video, you'll learn about 15 of the most astonishing deep sea discoveries in human history. Enjoy the viewing. The first to tell the world about Atlantis was the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, dedicating two of his dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, to this mysterious island. Plato referenced an ancient Greek sage who served as a priest in ancient Egypt and was privy to the history of this civilization. Whether one believes that Atlantis truly existed or that it was a product of the philosopher's imagination is, of course, a matter of personal belief. However, lost cities about which nothing was previously known are regularly discovered by archaeologists. Thus, it's entirely possible that Atlantis remains hidden in underwater depths. The location of the sunken island has long been sought after, from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean Sea. According to some sources, it might have been near the island of Thera in the Aegean Sea, or close to Bimini Island, where a submerged road and temple ruins were found. According to Plato, Atlantis was located in the Atlantic Ocean beyond Gibraltar. Historians who believe in the existence of Atlantis think the island housed a highly advanced civilization. But around 9,500 years ago, a catastrophe struck, and all of Atlantis and its inhabitants sank deep underwater. Most scholars, however, view the mysterious island as merely a myth, noting that Plato was a philosopher who often intertwined philosophical musings in his writings. Therefore, his works on Atlantis might merely be allegorical. Depths legends describe ocean depths as dwelling places for various monsters, but in reality, many real creatures unknown to scientists reside there. The underwater zone, up to a depth of 200 meters, is called the open zone, and the creatures inhabiting it are almost entirely studied. As the depth increases, the pressure rises and sunlight becomes unreachable. This seemingly inhospitable environment is populated by millions of amazing deep-sea inhabitants, most of which humans have never seen. The least explored creatures live at depths inaccessible to humans. Typically, they are much larger than other ocean creatures. They are generally blind, as sight is unnecessary in the darkness. To survive in such conditions with incredible pressure, their bodies contain almost no air and are mostly composed of water. While humans cannot dwell in their habitat, most deep-sea creatures wouldn't survive on land. For instance, the blobfish, comfortable at depths ranging from 600 to 1200 meters, simply disintegrates at the surface, resembling a puddle of jelly. The diversity of deep-sea creatures demonstrates that our planet houses two distinct worlds. While land is about 98% explored, we've only managed to study about 5% of the ocean's depths. Many of you have heard about the mysterious crop circles. Surprisingly, something similar exists deep underwater. In 1995, in the East China Sea, a Japanese diver discovered intricate, perfectly symmetrical, circular patterns on the seabed. Following this, divers continued to find similar circles, usually located at depths of 10 to 27 meters, with an average diameter of 2 meters. For a long time, these underwater designs remained a mystery, but it was solved in 2012. It turned out that the circle's creators weren't aliens, but small fish known as white-spotted pufferfish. During the mating period, the males create a cozy place for the female. They first clear the chosen area of shells and stones. They then start to swirl and hit the sand with their fins, creating a unique nest. It takes the male seven to nine days to create such an attractive mating spot. The mystery of these circles remained unsolved, mainly because this species of pufferfish was unknown. Thus, scientists not only found out who created these underwater masterpieces, but also discovered a new species of fish. The Bermuda Triangle has become a household name, symbolizing a place where everything vanishes, and for good reason. 
Mysterious phenomena occurred in the sky above the Bermuda Triangle, capable of causing aviation disasters, and sudden whirlpools appeared in the sea, dragging ships to the depths. This mystical location is situated in the northwestern part of the Atlantic Ocean. It got its name due to its positioning within the vertices of Miami, the Bermuda Islands, and Puerto Rico. Within the Bermuda Triangle lies a vast trench called the Milwaukee Depth, reaching a depth of 8,376 meters. Now, popular air and water routes pass through that triangle, but it was once commonly avoided. Everything began in 1543 when a Portuguese ship sank in the waters of the Sargasso Sea. In 1609, the English sailing ship Sea Adventure wrecked near the Bermuda Islands. Surprisingly, the survivors who managed to reach the islands decided to settle there permanently. That incident led to the Bermuda Islands becoming inhabited. Many disasters occurred in the Bermuda Triangle, often attributed to storms. Among the most notable was the mysterious disappearance of the British merchant Brig Mary Celeste's crew and the sinking of the frigate Atalanta with cadets from the Royal Naval Academy on board. But the real fear of the Bermuda Triangle emerged after the disappearance of an entire squadron of American Grumman Avenger bombers in December 1945. The pilots reported entering a dense fog and losing their way. An amphibious rescue plane was dispatched to assist them but also vanished without a trace. Notably, no debris from the aircraft was found upon searching the crash site. I believe everyone is curious about why tragedies occurred in the Bermuda Triangle. Setting aside UFO hypotheses, one of the more plausible reasons is the disintegration of methane hydrate on the seabed. This process produces large bubbles with a high methane concentration. These bubbles have significantly reduced density, and if a ship encounters them, it can lose buoyancy and sink. The release of methane into the air, according to this theory, can cause engine failures in aircraft flying above the water. However, neither this nor other hypotheses have been confirmed. Indeed, due to the climate and a multitude of reefs, the area is genuinely hazardous. But scientists believe that the mystique around the Bermuda Triangle has merely been sensationalized. There are far more dangerous places on Earth. If you've ever been interested in deep sea creatures, you may have noticed that they are much larger in size compared to shallow water creatures. For instance, the Japanese spider crab, which dwells up to a depth of 300 meters, has a leg span of up to 3 meters. Or the giant squid, whose total length can reach up to 13 meters. These creatures are just a few examples demonstrating deep sea gigantism. The habitat of these giants is devoid of light, and there isn't as much food variety as in the shallows. So how can these creatures grow to such monstrous sizes? Scientists have several hypotheses. One revolves around a prolonged sexual maturation period, as a result of which creatures grow much longer. In the case of crustaceans, gigantism may be due to low temperatures and high latitudes, which supports Bergman's rule. Thus, decreasing temperatures lead to increased cell growth and consequently to increased size. Moreover, crustaceans are known for continuous growth. Another theory is related to the scarcity of food. According to it, larger creatures can survive longer without food. It's also believed that larger sizes compensate for the lack of vision. Despite many hypotheses, the phenomenon of deep sea gigantism remains underexplored. Hence, such an anomaly stands as one of the mesmerizing mysteries of underwater dwellers. Deep beneath the water, numerous anomalies occur that scientists simply cannot explain. Here are just a few of them. In 2011, Swedish treasure hunters explored the Baltic seabed using sonar and discovered a strange object with a diameter of more than 18 meters its shape was too unusual to be a natural formation, resembling an alien spaceship. Scientists extensively studied the images of the object and concluded that it most likely has a geological origin formed due to the movement of glaciers. However, this theory remains unproven. Another anomalous phenomenon is the disappearance of deep sea formations. In 2011, using images from Google Earth, New reefs were spotted hundreds of kilometers off the coast of Greece. However, a year later they vanished. 
Undoubtedly, glitches in the Google system might have caused their mysterious formation and disappearance, but it's also possible that it happened due to an unexplored anomaly. These are just isolated cases of unexplained phenomena and strange objects, illustrating the vast amount of research still needed to further our understanding of the ocean. The true abyss in the oceans stretches from 6 to 11,000 meters underwater. Such depths are found in the deepest oceanic trenches. These areas were named the Hadal Zone after Hades, the ancient Greek god of the underworld. There are 46 such zones worldwide, and each is characterized by darkness, cold water temperatures, and monstrous pressure. Yet despite the extreme conditions, there is life in these oceanic depths. The Hadal Zone is home to amphipods, crustaceans with a soft shell, decapods, ten-legged crustaceans, eels, deep-sea jellyfish, single-celled microorganisms, and even invertebrate fish. All these creatures have adapted to the challenging life, and this infernal zone has become their home. Studying their way of life is almost impossible, and the full list of all deep-sea inhabitants remains unknown to scientists. The highest point on our planet is Mount Everest, with a height of 8,848 meters. But the deepest point is the Mariana Trench. This deep-sea trench is located in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, close to the Mariana Islands. The trench's crescent shape spans 2,550 kilometers in length and about 69 kilometers in width. The deepest point in the trench is known as Challenger Deep and reaches 10,994 meters. Research of the Mariana Trench began as early as 1875. Then, British scientists on the three-masted corvette Challenger managed to lower a deep-sea probe to a depth of 8,367 meters. In 1951, the British decided to repeat the measurements and using sonar, recorded a depth of 10,863 meters. In 1957, Russian scientists, led by Alexei Dobrovolsky, arrived to study the trench. Their measurements recorded a maximum depth of 11,022 meters. The most recent recorded depth during research in 2011 was 10,994 meters. The first descent to the bottom of the Mariana Trench was carried out in 1960 by U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh and explorer Jacques Picard in the Bathyscaphe Trieste, designed by Picard's father. They managed to descend to a record depth of 10,918 meters. After their successful dive, ten more journeys to this staggering depth were made. Science has advanced but even the most modern technologies do not allow for a thorough study of life at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which surprisingly exists there. Undoubtedly, the pressure of 108.6 megapascals at the trench's deepest point does not allow vertebrates to reside there. But certain mollusk species have adapted to survive even in these incredible conditions. They've learned to process hydrogen sulfide into protein. Among the trench's inhabitants, there are many deep-sea fishes that look like real monsters. They live at more accessible depths, but are still poorly studied. For example, anglerfish live at depths between 1,500, 3,000 meters, and the elusive ghostfish lives more than 2,000 meters underwater. But the most astonishing creature is the Mariana Trench slimefish, discovered at a depth of 8,100 meters. This is a genuine record as it's the maximum depth at which fish can exist. The Mariana Trench is full of many more mysteries, such as gigantic single-celled amoebas that have grown to 10 centimeters, hydrothermal vents spewing water hotter than 450 degrees Celsius, a lake of molten sulfur, and much more that scientists are yet to explore. Megalodon is an ancient shark that went extinct millions of years ago. These sharks are among the largest fish throughout human history. Scientists have discovered megalodon remains that could reach lengths of up to 15 meters and weigh more than 35 tons. For comparison, the great white shark's length is no more than 5 meters, with a weight up to 2 tons. Remains analysis indicated that these predatory fish were quite common during the Miocene and Pliocene periods. The predators fed on small cetaceans, 
pinnipeds, and large fish. Megalodons are often compared to great white sharks since this species is the largest among its relatives. However, prehistoric sharks were not of the mackerel shark species and represented a different primitive fish group. Therefore, scientists assume that megalodons may have looked more like sand sharks. These ancient predatory fish had about 276 teeth arranged in five rows. The size of their jaws could reach two meters, and the bite force was about 109 kilonewtons, equivalent to approximately 12.5 tons. Some cryptozoologists believe that megalodons exist even today, but their numbers are very few, and they reside in unexplored parts of the oceans. However, paleontologists refute this and are confident that these giant predatory fish have long been extinct. Their extinction could be due to climate change and the emergence of toothed whales, which not only posed hunting competition but also became their natural enemies. One of the most mysterious incidents in the history of global aviation is the disappearance of a squadron of five American Avenger bombers and a seaplane dispatched to search for them. On December 5, 1945, five planes with 13 crew members embarked on a routine training mission under the leadership of the experienced pilot, Lieutenant Charles Taylor. Their mission involved flying over the ocean, including the area of the Bermuda Triangle, and practicing bombing over the designated territory. This route was not new and was frequently used during training sessions in World War II. The entire flight duration was supposed to be two hours, even though the fuel reserve was calculated for 5.5 hours. Moreover, according to weather reports, the squadron wasn't expected to encounter any challenging weather conditions. Despite the apparent lack of negative factors for a successful training session, after two hours the pilots lost their bearings and couldn't navigate the surrounding area due to fog. Communication with the base was unstable, and it remained unclear where the five planes were and what was happening to them. Communication was re-established shortly after, but it didn't help either the commander or the crew members return to their base in Florida. Extended search efforts for a landing site resulted in all five planes running low on fuel, and Commander Taylor gave the order to ditch. Following this, all communication with the squadron was lost. Shortly after, three seaplanes were dispatched to search for the missing Avengers, and one of them soon disappeared from the radar and lost communication. Later, crew members from the tanker Gaines Mills reported witnessing an explosion of an aircraft not far from them. During the search and rescue operation organized by the Coast Guard, no traces of the plane crashes were found. Furthermore, to this day, no debris from the planes has been discovered. That's why this tragedy is considered one of the most mysterious in human history. The American National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, regularly records strange ocean sounds using hydrophones. All of them are publicly available and can be listened to. Most of the sounds have been studied and their nature is known, but some remain a mystery. One such sound is the whistle. It was first detected in 1997, but its source remains unidentified to this day. The whistle vaguely resembled dolphin cries, so some online users speculated that it might be the communication of undiscovered underwater inhabitants. However, this theory had a significant counterpoint. The whistle was recorded by the hydrophone only once. Scientists proposed their hypothesis. They believed that the eerie whistling sound arose from underwater volcanic eruptions. However, this assumption lacked any evidence, so the whistle from the ocean floor remains one of the most mysterious sounds ever recorded in the ocean. In 1997, in the southern part of the Pacific Ocean, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's hydrophone managed to record a strange, low-frequency sound. It somewhat resembled the cry of a dolphin or whale. However, in terms of loudness, it exceeded the sound made by the blue whale several times. Its similarity to the voices of animals initially led to the assumption that the sound's source was an unexplored deep-sea creature of immense size. The internet was immediately flooded with images of this creature, nicknamed Bloop. 
It was most often depicted as a giant fish about 100 meters in length with a massive, wide-open mouth. Interestingly, the coordinates of the sound source were 2,000 kilometers away from the habitat of Cthulhu, described by Lovecraft. This fact further heightened its popularity and belief in its existence. However, in 2012, scientists finally agreed that the cause of this strange sound was the tremor of ice sheets or the sliding of icebergs across the ocean floor. According to research, the iceberg, at the time of contact with the seabed, was located between the Bransfield Strait and the Ross Sea. As we all know, the world ocean is practically unexplored, so its waters may well hide a creature that no one has ever heard of. Colossal squids are deep-sea inhabitants of the Southern Ocean, whose sizes can instill terror in anyone. According to some estimates, its length can reach 14 meters and weigh more than 500 kilograms. These squids first became known in 1925 when a British zoologist found tentacles of one of the specimens in the stomach of a sperm whale. However, they were observed in their natural habitat only in the 1970s. These cephalopods are found exclusively in Antarctic waters at depths ranging from 2,000 to 4,000 meters. An interesting feature is the presence of ammonia or ammonium chloride in their bodies, which allows them to float underwater with almost no movement, unlike their shallow water counterparts. Currently, colossal squids are poorly studied. Only a little is known about their way of life, such as being passive predators. They hang suspended in the water until they encounter prey, then pounce on their victim. Their primary diet consists mainly of bioluminescent anchovies and small deep-sea fish. Among their natural predators, scientists identify sperm whales, Antarctic toothfish, and orcas. Ship crews are always prepared to face nature's catastrophic forces. Sometimes sailors have to abandon their vessels, which left adrift in seas and oceans turn into ghost ships that drift for years. One such ship was the British vessel Baikimo. In 1931, a few miles off Barrow in northern Alaska, the ship got stuck in ice. The sailors waited out the bad weather and returned on board. They got trapped in the ice several more times and one day simply lost the Baikimo. Eyewitness accounts suggest that after this incident, the ship continued to drift along Canada's northern coast for 40 years. It was last seen in 1969. Another ghost ship is the Mary Celeste, originally named the Amazon. One of its latter owners renamed it, hoping to ward off its misfortunes. The ship had a series of mishaps. Its first captain died, and it narrowly escaped sinking during strong storms several times. But renaming didn't change its fate. On November 7, 1872, the Mary Celeste left the port of New York. There were 13 people on board, including the captain, his wife, daughter, and sailors. Four weeks later, the ship was found by the brig D.I. Gracia, but no one was on board. Personal items and cargo remained in place, except for one lifeboat. This led to the conclusion that the ship was intentionally abandoned. Unfortunately, none of the people were ever found. Twelve years later, the Mary Celeste embarked on another voyage, but again it was ill-fated. The ship's wreckage was found in the Caribbean Sea only in 2001. One of the lesser studied areas for scientists is the world of microorganisms. Countless numbers of them inhabit the ocean. They are unfazed by extreme conditions and some thrive even at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. In 2015, Swiss, Norwegian, and Austrian researchers discovered a new type of microorganisms, colloquially called Loki. They belong to the archaea type. The archaea, discovered in the 1970s, are closely related to eukaryotes. However, scientists struggled to understand how the complex cells of eukaryotes could have arisen from the simplest archaea. The discovery of the new microorganisms provided more insights. Researchers believe that Loki represents the missing link in the origin of eukaryotes. This species lacks a nucleus characteristic of prokaryotic bacteria, but they contain over a hundred genes, including those coding for the actin protein, typical of eukaryotes. 
This fact supported the scientists' hypothesis that these cells participated in the early evolutionary stage of eukaryote development. This new type of archaea was found in the hydrothermal system of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge at a depth of 2,352 meters. Such extreme environments contain millions of unstudied microorganisms called dark matter microbes. Scientists believe that research in this area will not only help them discover even more unknown microorganisms, but also gain the missing information on the evolution of complex cells. And that's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for listening. See you soon. Bye.